retinoblastoma is the topic and retinoblastoma is a rather unfortunate cancer of the eye and it can be um, quite uh, devastating and um, unexpected. Uh, most of the time it's uh, found in children that are less than two years of age and it comprises about three percent of all childhood cancers so uh, it's kind of rare but it is a pretty decent number and essentially what you have and this is very important for licensing exams is the involvement of chromosome 13 and this is just something you have to memorize you know it's unfortunate part of uh, licensing exams and what you have is a deactivation of uh, tumor suppress suppressor gene so normally there's this uh, gene that's involved in uh, just as the name implies suppressing the tumors and in this uh, retinoblastoma cancer there's a deactivation of this tumor suppressor gene and that uh, initially um, can happen because of a genetic uh, mutation now the symptoms most commonly what you'll see is a parent uh, noticing that their baby or young child has a white pupil and that's uh, given a term known as leukocoria and this is happening because there's an abnormal white reflection coming from the retina and this is the most uh, prominent physical exam finding. Now when the baby is brought or the child, the young child is brought to the doctor and most likely it's an ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist can do all kinds of uh, very specific testing such as a CT of the eye or an ultrasound, orbital ultrasound and this can further uh, explore the uh, cancer and what's important is that if the parents or or um, older siblings of this affected child had uh, this as well, because this is uh, genetic, there needs to be genetic testing done as well. And what you're really looking for is you're looking for a retinoblastoma one gene mutation. So that's very important. It's highly specialized the diagnostic process and as is the treatment. The treatment uh, unfortunately is pretty devastating. It involves a nucleation and essentially what that means is a removal of the eye. Um, there's other treatment methods as well. One is known as photocoagulation and another one is known as cryotherapy and there's also radiation treatment involved just like there's radiation treatment involved in uh, other types of cancers as well. So let's take a look at some uh, clinical vignettes and see what this uh, looks like, see what kind of questions you get. A young mother is at the pediatrician's office for a routine well baby visit for her 18-month-old son. It is immediately noticed that one of the baby's pupils is white, while the other one is black. When asked about it, the mother relates that she saw the curious situation for the first time one week ago, but since the baby was otherwise asymptomatic, she did not think it merited special attention which of the following is the most appropriate course of action? Well, unfortunately, a white pupil uh, can uh, be retinoblastoma. A white pupil can actually, uh, also known as leukocoria, can be present in other uh, conditions as well, but retinoblastoma is one of them. So because this is a rather devastating and um, tragic occurrence, it seeks uh, emergency consultation with the eye specialist. So that would be choice D. Next question. A two-year-old girl, girl is evaluated because of a deteriorating vision. Physical exam, a whitish hue is noted in the right pupil along with strabismus. Palpation of the eye elicits apparent pain and tenderness patient is referred to an ophthalmologist who schedules surgery and removes a multifocal tumor from the right eye. The pathology report notes the presence of rosettes composed of cubital to columnar cells 
surrounding a central lumen in the tumor. In all likelihood, this child's condition stems from a mutation in a gene on chromosome. So they're giving you some pretty uh, deep pathology here uh, uh, involving um, the findings on a cellular level uh, noted in the pathology report. And that essentially is the pathology findings of retinoblastoma. And they're just asking what gene is the chromosome uh, on that is involved in retinoblastoma. Well, the gene is located on chromosome 13, so the answer would be choice D. Next one, five-month-old girl has bilateral retinoblastoma. Neither parent has a history of having retinoblastoma. Chromosomal analysis of the patient's stimulated peripheral blood lymphocytes is done, and the photograph is a representative karyotype. Which of the following critical events has most likely resulted from, a, from an aberration involving chromosome 13? So what they're basically saying is, what happens, what is the pathogenesis you know, of inheritance that's involved in retinoblastoma? Well, remember, it's a deactivation of the tumor suppressor gene. Tumor suppressor gene. And in particular, which tumor are we talking about? We're talking about the retinoblastoma suppressor gene. So that gene is deactivated. So let's see if which one of these that would be. That would be choice E. They don't use the word deactivation, but they just use the word loss. So tumor suppressor gene is lost. So that's the answer. And then finally, a young mother is at a pediatrician's office for a routine well baby visit for her 18-month-old son. The mother recalls that the child in his daycare program had to be sent home nine days ago because of pink eye, but none of the other children seem to have been affected. Physical exam reveals vital signs, stable vital signs. Baby has a white reflex in the left eye with no evidence of discharge. With the following uh, is the most appropriate course of action. This white reflex in the left eye is very uh, troublesome and because uh, you most likely will have some suspicion uh, whenever you have a white pupil in a child, suspicion of uh, retinoblastoma, and because the tumor is so deadly that it requires immediate action, diagnosis, and treatment. So follow up in two weeks, no. Uh, provide genetic counseling, routine follow up, no. It's got to be D or E. Uh, but before you set, schedule the surgery, you probably should have an a, a ophthalmologist take a look at it. And then if the ophthalmologist decides that this indeed needs to be surgically removed, then that would be the next step. So first D, and then probably after that E. So the answer to this question is D.